Hello, everyone. Welcome to the October 2019 I2B2 Transmart Foundation Community Meeting. My name is Rudy Potenzone, and I will uh, be the host today. Uh, Diane Keo uh, just completed the uh, Tubingen Symposium last week and is uh, off traveling uh, around Europe. <clears throat> Okay, so agenda today uh, is going to be a quick review of the Tubingen Symposium. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, beta releases of I2B2 and Transmart, and then we'll um, have a discussion about uh, contributing code to the foundation. First, uh, in terms of the Tubingen Symposium, uh, I'm just gonna give a, a couple of uh, notes here. Uh, I, I was not able to attend myself, but uh, we did have about 90 people uh, attending meeting uh, at the, the University of Tübingen. We had just wonderful support from the, the university uh, and um, Oliver and, and Dieter and the team there uh, really helped make everything uh, welcome, welcoming and uh, things ran very, very smoothly. Uh, this was one of the, the pictures that we had found of uh, Tübingen. And uh, I know that uh, Diane was quite anxious uh, that uh, it really was this beautiful uh, when she got there. And, and sure enough, she found right around the corner from her hotel room was, yes, that exact bridge with all the flowers and everything. So she was delighted to uh, to be able to actually see the, the same, uh, the same uh, location there. Um, we did have a, a number of keynotes uh, that are listed out here, uh, plus a number of user stories presented uh, some platform updates and also uh, hand, uh, workshops, uh, et cetera. And uh, we, um, we are in the process of pulling together uh, all of the presentations, which uh, I now have uh, and will be loaded in the next day or two uh, in terms of the slide decks and then the recordings. This is the whole, the meeting was uh, recorded and that rec those recordings will be uh, showing up in the next a week or so and we want to again want to thank everyone uh, who worked on this and presented uh, to make this event uh, quite uh, quite wonderful uh, here's the uh the attendees uh not sure why there's a leaf in the middle of the picture uh, blocking one of the attendees but uh, hopefully we have a better picture that uh, once everyone gets settled uh, i will be able to, to distribute um and uh we've also sent out a um questionnaire about what you thought about the event suggestions for next year etc generally people seem to be fairly happy with uh, with how the event went um and there were uh, about uh, but we only had about 16 responses to this so if you do go to the web page uh this the link to the survey is there and uh, i encourage you to um to add your comments i think um mike was going to also had a couple of comments uh, about the uh, the meeting. Uh, Mike Mendes, uh, Mike, I am unmuting you, Mike, and I'll get to your slide deck in a second. Okay. Uh, yep. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. Sounds fine. Okay. Great. So yeah, some of the slides I just sent to you uh, yeah. basically kind of. This it, I think. So Rudy really kind of went over this a little bit, but yeah, we had two uh, two really good uh, keynote speakers, uh, John Pierre and Sean, who talked about like uh, John Pierre talked about the data protection, and Sean talked about the phenotyping. And then we had some good updates on the software. We had some updates of the glowing bear, and then the ETL pipeline for Transmont, and then we also had some updates on like the Red Cap and Transmont and ITB2. And then there was some uh, general uh, good talks about various different topics, such as like the large scale observational clinical research and then some open source information for TB, um, and then the DI future and the transmitter research uh, 
platforms. Uh, like Rudy said, all of this stuff was recorded on the uh, uh, on and broadcast on YouTube, so they'll be be posted up. So you'll be able to see all of the videos and the uh, talks. Okay, can you jump to the next slide? Uh, and so on the second day, we had a couple of breakout sessions, which was pretty good. So we had one on Transmont, and then one on ITB2, and then um, the Hive gate was doing a demo of the Transmont and ETL, uh, dealing with the Juniper notebooks and stuff. So I think I don't think I don't believe those were recorded, but they were very good discussions, um, and there was good talks about the various different Transmonts. Um, but yeah, so that was basically what um, the Tibetan um, conference was, which is a very good and uh, it was a very good conference. Um, so Rudy, do you want me to do a quick uh, update of the one seven twelve? Yes, that would be that would be very good. Yep. Okay, so one seven twelve is coming out hopefully within the next uh, month. It's going to include some various different updates. One is we're going to be redistributing the software in a binary form, basically in a WAR file. So you can basically just drop the WAR file into you downloaded uh, Wildfly uh, deployment folder and just run the data up data scripts. Any of the configuration files are now within the database. So it should be a fairly quick and easy uh, installation process. You can still install it via the software, like via the source code, but the binary is gonna be the preferred installation uh, and update method. So you basically, when a new version comes out, we just replace the WAR file and then do any type of data updates. So upgrading will be a lot quicker and more efficient. Um, the other, we did some various uh, web client changes, uh, some enhancements to the fine tool, uh, fine uh, terms, uh, which we demoed in the uh, conference, at, which, and is also recorded in various times. Uh, I also did a talk on the integration of the Red Cap and how it could be used with both Transmont and ITB2. Uh, so red cap was going uh, red cap integration would be part of the 1712 and that would basically allow surveys that are generated in red cap to be saved into the observation fact the concept dimension gets updated and the ontology based on the uh, form uh, all, would also be auto generated um, and so uh, I think that that's the main changes. Hold on one second. Let me just do a quick search to see if I, I missed anything. Uh, like I said, we're in the beta stage of it. So hopefully, uh, so anyone who wants to test out the current version, that'd be great. Uh, give us any feedbacks, any updates that we need. Um, oh, that's amazing, my computer's frozen. <laughs> But I think that yeah, I think that's the major updates for one seven twelve. Um, so okay, Rudy. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna give a quick update on the Transmart. Um, let's see, lost my screen. There we go. Just a quick update on Transmart beta. We're also uh, in the midst of the Transmart version nineteen. Um, beta, uh, the Transmart platform. Uh, we've had a, a history of a um, number of releases. The most recent release was version 16.3 in 2018, uh, which was a very stable uh, version of the product. Uh, and so now we've uh, we have uh, ready to to release version 19. Uh, version 19 does a number of things. One is to uh, get uh, some of the underlying architecture. Uh, upgraded in terms of Grails uh, using Java 8, uh, et cetera, so that we are on, uh, again, supported versions uh, of our core technologies. Uh, this is a, 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 a interim step. Uh, we will be moving to the most recent versions and uh, when we get to version 20 next year of, of Transmart, but this at least puts us on uh, the uh, uh, a path that has us using supported versions of uh, all the underlying tools uh, also, a tremendous amount of reorganization and code cleanup uh, for this version, um, while um, 
you know, uh, making sure that all of the features from 16.3 are incorporated. So this is a full release uh, of the Transmart functionality um, that we've uh, that everyone's familiar with. Uh, the other big change, other big changes are that we uh, have uh, made changes to the database schema so that we're now um, consistent, uh, much more consistent with the I2B2 schema. And it's our uh, plan going forward that we will keep the, the two schema uh, in Transmart and in I2B2 uh, synchronized. Um, and uh, we'll have some advantages in doing that when we get to version 20. Uh, we have uh, incorporated the picture API that was developed in Paul VX Lab, uh, and again uh, is giving us some um, some interesting uh, capabilities. And uh, we'll especially get some of the enhancements from that, uh, some in version 19, but also even more in version 20, uh, and also a number of uh, cleanups, for example, in the ETL loading, and um, and some bug fixes. Uh, this work uh, was all largely, a lot of this work was done in, in various groups, but um, Peter Rice, who has been serving as our release manager from uh, his role at Axiomedics, has really been the, the key guy to pull all this together and uh, continues to, to serve as the release manager. Um, all this is available. It's all in a single GitHub repository uh, that's linked there. It's, uh, it's used 16.3 as its starting point. Uh, and brought, uh, as I said, all these things together. Um, and uh, it's all now available uh, out, uh, you know, number of, uh, again, as I said, number of big uh, bug fixes that are listed here, a lot of other things as well. Uh, all of this is documented on the wiki. Uh, you can see also uh, a link to a demo version with data loaded for testing. So it's possible to just click that link You'll have uh, the usual test data uh, out there and be able to test uh, the system. Um, also, information on testing on the wiki, including the feature list, what's been tested already, and where we'd like to get some help. Uh, and uh, we encourage uh, everyone who's interested uh, to uh, give it a, a go. Uh, again, you can you know just pop right into version 19. The instructions are all there. Uh, and uh, have a look. Uh, please try out the, the types of uh, things that you usually do and uh, let us know. Uh, uh, bug reporting is as usual in JIRA. And um, again, instructions are on the wiki on how to report uh, bugs and things uh, as we go. So the the plan, uh, yeah, and then there's, there's release notes there in terms of all the changes that have taken place. So the, the hope is that we can get through and, and get the, the majority of everything tested in the next you know, couple of weeks and really get this out there um, uh, certainly by the, the first of November is our, our real target, uh, because, you know, again, we, we believe that this is, um, you know, it's, it's a, a well-supported version in terms of the underlying architecture. And, uh, it, uh, it, it is a full release of the product and has all of the, the capabilities, um, that previous releases have had. Um, and uh, lots of, uh, huge thank yous to, uh, to Peter for all his hard work. Um, Paul VX Lab has done a lot of, of, of very helpful work uh, as they as they continue to build their environment, the an I2B2 merged uh, type of uh, uh, environment for, for deploying tools. Uh, and then also to Clarivate for uh, con contributing and working on the TM data loader. So that's what I had uh, there. Um, I also wanna to talk briefly and um, about contributing code to the foundation that was this was intended to be our, our highlight talk for this this uh, session unfortunately jeff clan who uh, presented uh, a number of things on i2b2 at the um at the meeting at terbingen has come come back with a uh, a bad uh, cold that has lost his voice and so was unable to, to actually talk about this and we'll have jeff come back on probably next month and um talk more about contributing code to I2B2. Um, and uh, I'll have, uh, we'll have, um, uh, Michael say a few words, I think, as, as we get going. But Transmart, we've had a code contribution um, process um, for Transmart that uh, we, we've had. 
in, in place for actually several years now. So if, uh, you know, and, and the thing about Transmart is that it really is a community project. It has 100% uh, contributions, uh, you know, basically all of the capabilities that come in are really contributed by, you know, users and, and uh, some of the developers from, from different commercial groups uh, and get contributed back to the, um, to the system uh, and when a, a contributor wants to submit you know a new feature or a new plugin uh, whatever uh, basically these are the steps that they take uh, a contributor makes the final code available to the release manager uh, and it's got to come with test scripts sample data uh, and user and code documentation and, and all of that is is checked you know once it, it gets contributed to us um, the release manager then will assemble all of this, get it into the right place in the GitHub, um, and then and try building uh, the, building it into a, a release candidate, um, assuming that everything goes okay uh, with that. This then is uh, made available as a, a beta test, and so when you get the the beta tests, uh, it it may include some contrib contributed code from. You know, or new features from uh, different different people, and these will all be uh, documented in the release notes uh, with the beta as we get it sent out. Uh, and then, uh, as any defects come in, uh, it's the con contributor's responsibility to actually go and make the uh, appropriate um, uh, changes uh, to the code, uh, and then it will get you know submitted to the next version of the beta. Once uh, it's deemed ready um, by the, the PMC, the, um, the re release manager brings together the release candidate. Uh, this goes through a final inspection phase where uh, we both run you know, the, the final testing of the, the release. Uh, and um, we also uh, do a few other things like run a tool called scan code that e examines all of the code and looks for you know, licensing and copyright issues that may be uh, within the code. Uh, and um, given uh, hopefully everything is, is all clear uh, at the end of this, the release manager also then confirms that we, we gather uh, what's called a developer certificate of origin. Uh, this is something that we've borrowed from the Linux Foundation. Uh, and this just says that the contributor has the right to contribute this code and gives them the right of to the foundation to distribute it, uh, and so once all of this is completed, uh, we are ready to go to release uh, with the, the product. And um, the um, I'm not sure, um, Mike. Did you want to say anything about the um, ex code contributions for uh, I2B2, or should we just defer that till next time? Uh, yeah, I can uh, talk about it. Yeah, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing the same, similar, we're going to learn from Transmon how they're doing the code contributions. So we're going to have the same type of like form that you have, that you guys are using. As far as uh, like contributing the code, uh, so I think we're going to look at using the GitHub, like if you do a pull request, you can make the changes and then, uh, then we can see it and then we can do we can pull it back into the main branch and do any type of testing that we that we need to do. So I think because we've already gotten a couple of pull requests, and so that kind of worked out in one seven twelve. So I think we'll probably continue doing it that way using the software of GitHub to assist in this. So that's basically uh, yeah. That okay. Update. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any questions on the release process or contribution uh, contributing code to the um, to the foundation at this point? We will be, you know, we're we're, we're trying to get all of this together into a single kind of policy, uh, so that you know everyone, you know, it is very clear how exactly you, you go about doing this, but um, it's something that, you know, I think that we're, you know, as a, you know, trying to be a, a good open source um, uh, foundation with, with platforms that are growing thanks to the, you know, to the contributions of the community, 
Um, we think this is an important part of what we do in terms of our you know, stewardship of these two very important platforms. Um, I know a question came up um, at the Tabingen meeting uh, in terms of uh, there's a, there's a release of Transmart out there called Transmart 17.2. Uh, I just wanted to to make a comment about that. Um, the the foundation um, does release uh, official versions of the platform from our perspective, and uh, you know from the work that we do, we go through a testing process. Uh, it gets you know, vetted by a number of people and then gets released. Um, and the last release, uh, as I said, was 16.3. It was a full release, had all the capabilities, met all of our uh, exit criteria in terms of the, the release itself. Um, we, there, we did have a, a foundation project called version 17.1 that we went through. Uh, the decision was made to, to not do a full platform release on, on version 17.1. Uh, but we did do a, 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 a um, programmer uh, programmer release, uh, pre-release, uh, basically. And so there's a version 17.1 server-only release of Transmart that uh, was put out by the foundation. But it was not uh, intended and was not a full release of the platform. There was a, a lot of things that were missing or not completely working. Uh, and so the decision was to, to continue on and, and build version 19 uh, separately. Um, in the meantime, uh, I mean, this is open source and, and anybody can download the source code and, you know, make changes and do what they want. And um, one of one of the uh, contributors, uh, uh, the Hive decided to release version 17.2 as, uh, as a private, you know, as their release uh, of the, the platform. So, um, they uh, they make that available. They provide the support uh, for that, presumably. Uh, but this is not a foundation release. It never was in, intended to be, uh, and it's something that you know if you have questions on and interest in, uh, you really should reach out to the Hive directly uh, to find out you know more about it. Um, but um, you know the the PMC uh, decided that um, we we wanted to go in a different direction, and so that's where version 19 has come about. Now, there is a question about uh, Glowing Bear. Uh, Glowing Bear, again, is a user interface. It is open source. It is a product of the Hive. Uh, and um, today, right now, it does not, um, you know, none of the foundation releases have incorporated Glowing Bear. But as many of you know, we have a working group on user interfaces. They've been looking hard at Glowing Bear, at Leaf, at a number of different uh, user interfaces. and. One of the things that, you know, uh, probably not until version 20, but one of the things that we're looking closely at is to, to see, you know, how can we offer uh, multiple user interfaces and uh, you could pick the one that's most appropriate for, for your group or for a particular project. Uh, and certainly Glowing Bear is, is one of the ones that uh, there's a lot of interest in. Um, and so this is, um, you know, one of the, you know, the, the version 20, planning that we're doing for Transmart uh, includes uh, architectural enhancements, as I said, getting up to Java 11, getting up to Grails 4, things like that in the, in the plumbing. Uh, it is also um, doing a little bit, you know, quite a bit more in terms of the I2B2 and Transmart integration, being able to open the same uh, data sets, you know, across so the studies across the, the two products. Uh, and then uh, a third piece is the, um, the ability to support other user interfaces uh, on top of Transmart. Uh, and then a few other interesting things uh, are coming, such as integration with Fractalis. So, um, you know, we have a, a lot of things uh, that we're, we're targeting for version 20. And, um, you know, we, I think my, my best guess right now is that our uh, integration with Going Bear will come uh, hopefully early in 2020 uh, as we get to a, uh, the, the version 20 release of uh, Transmart. So that answers that question, I hope. If anyone else has a question, you can um, type it into the uh, chat window. 
you can also type it into the question window or you can raise your hand and watch it and trying to watch all of these. Not seeing any other questions. Anyone else have anything they'd like to contribute? Anybody who attended Tobingen want to add anything? Okay. Mark Bacon, I'm unmuting you. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's any follow up from the, there was talk of a European subgroup at Tobingen. And I was just wondering if there's anyone volunteered or um, if, if there's anyone following that up. Um, as I wasn't there, I, I didn't hear, I had, did not hear about it. Um, uh, what does that mean? Yeah. So, yeah, it's like the ETL the groups yeah. and the, the user groups, oh, yeah. several, several types of groups. And so um, yeah, I think yeah. Diane proposed yeah, yeah. the European subgroup. And there's quite a lot of interest from um, some people uh, in Holland and in France and, and, me, also, and me as well. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Um, yeah, it's Mark Bacon here from, uh, from oh, yeah. Oxford University. So, yeah, that sounds like I, a I mean, great idea. Yeah, yeah, I've heard a couple of emails since. Um, so, okay. yeah, I mean, whenever you want to set them up, there's, I, I'm, sure. I'd like to become a member, and um, a few other people would. Yeah, I mean, like so many of these things, it's it's really about the participation, right? If there's interest, we can we certainly will try to, you know, support what we can. And um, Diane has not come home yet from the uh, from the meeting. She's uh, traveling. I think now she's in Hungary, apparently. Right. Um, so uh, we haven't had a chance to actually talk about, you know, some of the things that came out of the meeting. Okay. That sounds great. So, 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 as long as it's not uh, forgotten, because <laughs> it was, uh, right. yeah, there's, there's quite a few of us willing, willing to sort of participate in that. And also we've got a sort of user group, an informal one in, in the UK, linking up uh, some other Transmart users uh, at uh, ah, Barts, okay. Barts and Queen Mary's yeah, University. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so just, we could. I got a note from um, Keith. He says that uh, Peter Peter Rice has volunteered actually to help set that up. So it's it's certainly something that we'd be very interested in. Um, we you know one of the things that um, we, we're trying you know we're trying to get the the, the member community um, uh, more involved. And in one of the places uh, the, the the user groups um, the the um, the, the working groups have been really a place where we've had a lot of interest and a lot of activity. Uh, and so, you know, we would love to just, you know, stimulate these to be, you know, more involved and, and you know, having uh, European versions makes a lot of sense so we don't have to fight the time zone, you know, and I'm sure we can have joint meetings and things. The other question was, you know, really having uh, a working group that is focused on these different symposia, right? So we now, you know, we're on a rhythm you know, of having uh, a June meeting at Harvard Medical School in uh, uh, Boston, uh, in, as I say, in June each year, and then in October having a, a European meeting, and, and having that being much more driven by, you know, the user community makes, makes just so much sense. You know, we, we work hard to, to try to bring, you know, bring these things together, but, you know, having more involvement from, you know, from members to, to you know, put together the, the agenda and get speakers and things and, and lay, for, lay out what types of things get discussed. It, it's really good for the health of the, of the community to, to do that. So we would love to try to get that, you know, pushed ahead. Yeah, if, if, if Peter wants to be the leader and then, yeah, if he can just set up the group and then uh, I suppose yep. we'd do a request, would we, uh, from the website? Yep. Um, yeah, yep. Yep. like the ETL group, yeah. Okay, great. So we will, I'm sure we'll work on that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Okay. And um, Mark um, is asking a question. What's the Shrine compatibility for I2B2 1.7.12? Um, Mike Mendes, can you answer that question? Can you hear there me? You yes. Yep. Yes, yep. Okay. So I don't see the question. So what's what's the shrine compatibility for I2B2 1.7.12? Okay. So yeah. So 
what we usually do is we send out the release to uh, Mark and the people at HMS, and then they test out uh, the current shrine. Currently, shrine is at 2.0, and so our goal is probably within the next week or two, we're going to be sending off the uh, the release of the candidate to them. They'll test it out, make sure that it works with uh, the Shrine 2.0, and then it will be compatible. Um, I know that the last release wasn't verified against the Shrine, and the last working version was 1.7.10, but we plan on having 1.7.12 compatible with uh, the Shrine. And I don't foresee any reason why it shouldn't be, because the XML messaging hasn't changed in a way to make it incompatible. Okay, is, is that okay? Is... <laughs> Mark, does that answer your question? Okay, um, Mark Bacon, did you have another question? Uh, no. No, I think okay, that was another. I think okay. I think that was another mark actually. That one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I got that one. Yeah, your hand was still raised. That's okay. Oh right. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. My no problem. No bad. problem. Oh, sorry. Okay. Any other questions or comments anyone wants to make? Otherwise, I think we'll uh, we'll end the meeting. It's a little bit short, I know, and uh, Jeff, I, I know, sends his uh, apologies uh, for not, uh, but you know, he's he just would not have been able to talk here. So, um, okay, thanks everyone. Uh, this uh, these slides and the recording will be made available in a in a day or so. All right, thanks everyone. <laughs>